I'm Diana Felsone, and this is 4 for 4 SciTech, where we discuss four crazy cool SciTech topics in just four minutes. We've talked a lot about 3D printed things on the show, from 3D printed heads, it's a real thing, to 3D printed makeup. But James here has brought in 3D printed sneakers. It's show and tell time. It is indeed. These are my shoes. They're built by a startup called People Footwear, and they're not completely 3D printed, like if you think okay. that's the case. It's just these raised rubber parts here. But the whole idea is that the company wants to cut down on wastage and streamline manufacture. In traditional shoe manufacture, there's a huge amount of wastage with cutouts and that type of thing. So you know, they're really comfortable, super light. I'm really pleased with them. Okay. I like this. Anything that brings shoe prices down, I'm in favor of. Are they comfortable? They're super comfortable. Okay, hopefully Louboutin makes them so I can finally afford those. There you go. Katie's our fancy panelist. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great that fashion is finally doing 3D printed things that look nice, that looked super futuristic and like not really accessible mm -hmm. for a while. So even though it's not fully 3D printed, I think it's a step in the right direction. You know, in this company, they've got all the shoes that are digitally knitted. Like they're yeah. doing all sorts of cool different manufacturing techniques. What are you thinking in terms of 3D printed? footwear where are we really at, at getting a fully printed shoe it's just real quick but at the start of it oh this is, this is exciting stuff did you know and this is gonna blow your minds that Chrissy Teigen is your cousin and even that guy who played Harry Potter Daniel Radcliffe I kid you not I know you're laughing at me well according to AJ Jacobs who does lifestyle experiments we're all related which will probably make you look at your boyfriend a little weird now I know so Katie what exactly is he saying here are we really all related are you my cousin you're my cousin you're my cousin you're my cousin <laughs> distant relatives but <laughs> technically we're all big one happy family which yes that makes dating a little bit weird but yeah i think that it's interesting because it says that hey the people sitting next to you could be your seventh cousin mm -hmm. yeah there's so many of these dna analysis you know s services now i think he's drawn in a lot of data from them you know i use one of them and it's got, kind of show me a lot of interest and stuff it's good to are we on. related not as far as I'm aware. You're not one of the people who sent me an email on it, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> but, you know, it's great that all this is coming together. And also, Jacobs is doing this for a charity, and I think that that's all. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Right, so the money is going to Alzheimer's research. So the more uh, DNA that, you know, we, we donate to research, the more we're going to have, uh, you know, ideas into insidious diseases like Alzheimer's. So it's, it's right up the alley of where pharmaceuticals are going. It's a great cause. It also piques our curiosity of where we've come from, where we're going. And also, it's a, a greater message, I think, of people because if we all think we're related, maybe we won't fight so much. <laughs> I don't know. A solar sail space launch is happening today. What is the importance of the sail? And I am fighting the urge to sing Christopher Cross is sailing, which none of my friends here know. Please fight that urge. But no, I mean, last week we were all talking about the Solar Impulse yeah. 2, solar power plane. Now we're seeing solar power in space. So, you know, there's going to be a launch which is going to send a tiny spacecraft called a CubeSat into space. And that CubeSat is basically going to have a solar sail. Okay. The whole idea is that it will use solar radiation to power itself around. It's absolutely huge. I think it's really, really exciting. Yeah, it is exciting because these little CubeSats, which are tiny, can't carry enough fuel to propel their full journey. So we're looking into seeing whether solar power can actually do that instead. Bill Nye says this is going to change the world, and it's definitely going to cut down on space missions. It sounds like this was a hit on Kickstarter. A lot of people mm -hmm. sent over money. They raised over $500,000 for the next mission. So I look forward to seeing what they have to come. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is only going to be a test. You know, the, 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 the sale may only be mm -hmm. unfurled for a few days, but there's going to be a bigger, bigger mission next year. So just watch it. Yeah, it's extremely interesting, but like you said, it only can, this cube only can hold a certain amount of gasoline to propel it forward, so they're highly dependent upon the solar sail in order to work, because otherwise, it's all sailing left. I've never been a sailor. Chilean Nets brings in beer from fog. People are like, what? <laughs> well, fog isn't your typical brewery, so how is this even possible, Jen? Well, of course, we're not actually pulling beer from the air, but in Chile's Atacama Desert, there's uh, tons of fog. So uh, researchers have figured out a way to use nets to pull water from the air and collect them, and a local brewery is using that water to make a Scottish ale. But it's pretty pricey. It is pricey, and it is truly a microbrew. They're doing, you know, about 6,000 gallons a year. Okay. 
How cool is this, though? I mean, do you know how foggy the UK is? I mean, like, I wonder, <laughs> where has this technology been my entire life? This net that's like, what, one millimetre? Less than one millimetre? No, it basically catches that condensation, turns it into beer. This is awesome. Like, I can't wait to taste it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> California needs to use this to solve their drought. San Francisco has a lot of fog. Apparently, this could be put to good use and maybe used at the wineries there. Otherwise, they're going to soon be showering in wine. Right. <laughs> and, you know, this is surely a novel way to use that water. But, you know, the real reason it's been... Uh, you know, being explored is they're hoping to curb desertification and actually have it as drinking water for, you know, the local community. Which is even more important. But they did say that this particular fog year has a unique taste and quality to it. So maybe we could get our hands on that next week. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think on Twitter with the hashtag 444SciTech.